Hello, I'm Jonas Chelevinsky, and you're watching TVP World Talks, where every word matters. President Volodymyr Zelensky is back from the United States following a difficult trip during which he wanted to present his victory plan to both the current administration and the potential future president of the United States. Did he succeed? What is going to happen next? What are the chances that indeed the West will help Ukraine win and not merely achieve some sort of unsatisfactory compromise? We're going to talk about this with our guest today, Rostislav Khotin, senior editor for the Ukrainian service at Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty. Hello and welcome to TVP World. Hello, Janosz. Before we move on to the US, though, a quick question. Do you think that there is a risk that the European resolve is going to get eroded gradually? I'm asking in the context of the results of the elections in Austria, where a uh, far-right pro-Russian party has won the biggest number of votes, not sure if they will found, for, you know, form a government, but this is a trend that we've seen recently, far-right pro-Russian parties gaining strength. Yes, uh, it's true that far right uh, winning Austrian election, but it doesn't mean that they will uh, form the government because other parties are uh, holding negotiations to form a government which will exclude the far right in Austria. Yes, it's true they are supporting uh, Russia uh, in the war uh, against Ukraine. They are on the Russian side, more leaning towards Russia. They are against uh, EU sanctions against Russia. They are strongly against uh, European and Euro-Atlantic integration of Ukraine. But it's uh, been a trend in all over across Western Europe, and uh, it only says, uh, is saying to us uh, this fact that Europe should think uh, strategically about migration prob uh, problem, and uh, has uh, the European Union has to resolve it somehow uh, to ease this. Uh, 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 problem of uh, illegal immigration, of uh, migration generally in Europe, uh, because uh, from election to election, it will be again and again repeated a pattern in Europe, in Western Europe especially, when the far right will be just sh that short from forming a government or uh, winning election and be able to form a government in the future. So the sooner the European Union solves the immigration issue, the better for the EU and for Europeans, for the Europeans. Uh, that's a recurring theme, but another recurring theme theme, which also appears in the United States, which brings us neatly into the discussion of President Zelensky's visit, is the so-called desire to achieve peace. We see that it, not just in uh, European far-right and often also far-left parties, but also with some of the members of the American establishment, especially the Republican establishment, they say we want to achieve peace as soon as possible, this war has to end, no more casualties, and so on. Do you think that this is a dangerous narrative, repackaging, uh, basically not being able to win the war, not willing to help Ukraine win the war, as a desire to achieve a peaceful, negotiated settlement. You know, nothing wrong with desire to achieve peace in Ukraine. It's, it's okay, it's fine. It shows that people take seriously the, the, this war in Ukraine, which is ongoing and which lasts already for two and a half, more than two and a half years. That's fine. But the thing is that Ukraine wants to have a stable and lasting and fair peace, not just a peace to kind of to uh, frozen the war uh, where it is now, the, the current front line, it won't be, and to uh, sacrifice Ukrainian territories in Russian favor. No, that's it's not a, a, a fair peace. And uh, a peace when Russia could regroup to reinforce its forces, to uh, gain more strength and to attack Ukraine further in the future, it's not a lasting peace. Ukraine Would you say that this is exactly the problem well? with J.D. Vance's plan, because President Zelensky was criticized yeah, 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 for saying yeah. he doesn't like this plan, but should he have spoken out on this? Yeah, you know, uh, the, the plan which foresees the, the freezing of the conflict, the freezing of the current front line, the uh, 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 abandoning uh, by Kyiv of uh, Russia occupied territories of Ukraine. And just want to remind you that Russia now currently occupies more than 20% of Ukrainian territories. Uh, and it's not a fair and a, a, a lasting deal. Uh, Trump is saying that he wants a, a fair deal for Ukraine. 
And uh, according to Zelensky in an interview to Fox News, Trump's, uh, Trump will support Ukraine, he said, uh, during their 40 minute uh, conversation they had in New York uh, at the end of last week. Uh, 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 there are probably uh, uh, differences between vision of Donald Trump and vision of his uh, running mate, uh, J.D. Vance. Uh, J.D. Vance uh, uh, is proposing uh, the kind of demilitarization zone and uh, also a kind of unfair deal for Ukraine, to be honest with you. But uh, Trump, it, it looks like, uh, paradoxically, looks a little bit more balanced in terms of Ukraine. He, he is supporting Ukraine, as Zelensky said, and generally he wants to bring peace, lasting peace quickly. He doesn't provide a lot of details of his vision for peace plan. Uh, we, we know that he, uh, the only things we know about his vision, that he wants to have uh, negotiations between Kiev and Moscow. He wants them to negotiate. If Kyiv refuses to negotiate, he will stop arms supplies to Ukraine. If Russia refuses to negotiate in, uh, with honesty, with honest approach, then he will uh, uh, give Ukraine as much weapons as possible and uh, give permission to strike Russian territory and so on and so forth. And will push to punish Russia, uh, Russia even more with, with sanctions, especially bring down oil prices, which will hurt Russian budget, state budget and Russian economy. That's his vision general vision of the plan. Of course, I mean, the Republicans but, uh, have a somewhat uneven record. There was also the question of blocking funds for Ukraine in Congress with Speaker Mike Johnson at the center of it. So the funds were not flowing into Ukraine, weapons were not being delivered. Uh, so that's, of course, one thing there to remember. Now, would you say that generally President Zelensky's visit in the U.S. was successful? Did it achieve uh, the objectives that he set out to achieve? You know, the initial stage was successful. Uh, then uh, there was a main part of the visit was not a success because he was caught in the uh, Rep Republican Democratic uh, kind of uh, calamity in the U.S. before election. He was uh, uh, his visit was seen as a very partisan kind of supportive of Democrats uh, when Mike Johnson even uh, asked to uh, to remove Ukrainian ambassador for the United States that visit to arm factory in Scranton uh, state of Pennsylvania which is the best place of Joe Biden and um, which was accompanied by the Democratic governor and two Democratic congressmen with no Republican presentation it looked like a one-sided visit leaning towards the Democrats but then when uh, Zelensky finally met, uh, extended his stay in the United States and finally met Donald Trump, it uh, uh, was uh, taken as a kind of attempt to be, to be seen as a balanced visit, as a bipartisan visit, not partisan, bipartisan. He distanced himself from American politics. He said that we are not interfering in U.S. internal politics and pre-election campaign. Uh, we, uh, will support, uh, we will support the decision of the American people, as he said, uh, stated. Uh, so, uh, and this meeting with Trump, it corrected the n narrative of this visit as to, uh, to be more balanced and more, uh, bipartisan. Well, especially since uh, talking about election interference, I mean, there are other countries interfering in U.S. elections and they are really spending budgets on that. So accusing Ukraine of this, well, uh, slightly questionable. One quick question, though. President Zelensky is criticized for basically presenting a plan, which is like a repackaging uh, request for, repackaged request for weapons. But what did the commentators expect? I mean, Ukraine is a country at war. Should he have presented something more there, some more complicated pathway towards uh, achieving a just peace? Is this criticism justified, do you think? You know, we have to uh, uh, see a uh, uh, distinction between Zelensky's peace plan, peace formula, which consists of 10 points, and victory plan, also drawn by Zelensky, by himself in secrecy, uh, which he presented in the United States, this uh, victory plan. So that's our two, two different uh, documents, two different visions. Uh, uh, Ukraine is uh, sticking to its peace formula and peace plan, which foresees the uh, 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 restoration of 100% of Ukrainian territorial integrity 
European sovereignty. Uh, but to achieve this peace plan, to achieve this peace formula, uh, Hydro, uh, Hydro's uh, uh, victory plan, uh, how to boost Ukrainian military cap capabilities on the front lines, how to change the, the tide of, of the war now quickly with uh, U.S. weapons, Western weapons, you know, per permission to strike Russia, uh, to uh, continuation of operation in Russian Kurs Kursk region, and so on and so forth. So these so two plans must kind of be seen together. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. Yeah. We'll be coming back to this story as it develops. Rostislav Khotin was our guest today here on TVP World. Thank you very much for joining us and for sharing your expertise. Thank you. And I'm Ilan Shrevinsky. You're watching TVP World. Please do stay with us.